such. I hope that's very, very clear uh, and useful for your game. These are the odds in general of Big Slick. This is then a breakdown of flopping different flops with that holding. 1 in 3.5, 28, basically 29% of the time, pairs exactly one whole card. Exactly one. 1 in 3, this basically, again, this, this magic number here, this 32%, hits at least an ace or a king, right? And 49% of the time, you're going to hit that ace or the king by the river. Okay, not knowing your other opponent's whole cards. When your opponents are playing non-paired pocket cards, they are going to miss just as much as you, namely, more or less 66% of the time, two and three flops. Um, be very conscious of this number. <laughs> yeah. uh, it will, will definitely uh, be useful for you in the future. Good. Uh, one in 29 hits two pair or better, uh, and that's for any unpair holding preflop. Uh, 145, yeah, more or less 1 in 50 hits uh, top 2, basically pairing the ace and the king. 1 in 74 is going to flop trips, that means ace, ace, or king, king on the board. Uh, 1 in 9 hits a flush draw. Uh, that's very standard for any two suited cards, so that means your odds against right, hitting even a flush draw, okay, when holding suited cards preflop, is 8 to 1. Whenever somebody then holding two suited cards, such as ace king or any other two suited cards, whenever a person then flops the flush, that's 118 to 1. Just as a heads up, doesn't happen very often. So <laughs> happens one in every 119 times you get dealt two pocket uh, uh, two pocket cards that are suited. All right, two whole cards that are suited. Good. Uh, and this just kind of goes down the line here, hitting a full house with non-paired hands. Uh, over a thousand to one, right? Uh, four of a kind, ninety-eight hundred to one, and yeah, royal flush. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> Point zero zero five percent of the time. Um, here, very briefly, with uh, pocket pairs. Okay, these are the situations here. You got your pocket pair. Flop comes. Um, you're going to hit trips or better. 11.8% of the time, namely 1 in 8.5, expressed as odds against 7.5 to 1. Okay, Flopping exactly the set is an 8 to 1. Uh, hitting, hitting your set by the river, more or less 19% of the time is going to happen. Uh, 4 to 1 against, right? Uh, 2 pair, and then here you see basically uh, when you're holding pocket pairs, when you, you're going to flop a full house only one time in 137 flops. Not often. 0.74%. Flopping a four of a kind is unheard of. It's 407 to 1. Just to give you guys an idea of, of how that looks with, you know, unpaired hands such as ace king coming into the flop, you're going to miss basically one time, or two times in three. You're only going to hit one time in three. So more or less 33%. Uh, holding your pocket pairs. Um, yeah, that's the breakdown on that. And again, there are many, many different tables that we get into in different uh, different video series concerning yeah the likelihood of you, you know, hitting playable flops given certain holdings. Uh, but that is again for a different video. Uh, now to the outs calculations. We've got this beautiful chart here: Texas Hold'em odds calculations for draws. Uh, when you are likely drawing two, or when your opponent is drawing two, this is actually the assumption. Let's say here, as we had earlier, a flush draw. Okay, so you've got your suited ace king, two suited board, and you've got nine outs for your flush. That means there's 13, 13 total um, total cards per suit. You have two, there's two on the board, right? So there's nine left, and that's how this works out then. Uh, this x factor that I have here is basically a multiplication factor. Yeah, there's basically a rule of thumb where, um, in order to estimate, right, the probability of you completing your draw for any one card, it's basically two times the number of outs you have that gives you your percentage. So two times eight, I forgive me, two times nine is eighteen, plus one gives you nineteen percent, and it's it's actually quite exact. For Texas Hold'em again, right? Express expressed as a percentage here is um, or odds against is four point two two to one. Again, just playing with the numbers here, guys. 100 divided by 19, more or less, call it 100 divided by 20, right, is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 to 1 against. 
Um, for the turn, it's a bit better, right? Because there's one card that's out, one additional card. And that's then 4.11 one to 1. And if you push, for example, with a push calculator, just with the flush draw, uh, the likelihood of hitting the turn is then 30, basically 35%. It expresses odds against them 2 to 1, 1 1.86 to 1, whatever. What I want to look at here is this one. Same scenario, you've got the flush draw and the ace king. Right, so you've got the flush draw and two overcards. So basically here an open in a straight or a flush, a flush or a pair, <laughs> or an inside straight, flush or top pair. Okay, so this flush or top pair is the last scenario. And that's where you've got basically nine outs, right, for the flush, plus six outs okay, for the ace of the king. All right, that's gonna give you a total of fifteen. Whenever you push on the flop, even though you haven't hit the flop at all, your equity, even without hitting the flop, is 54%, right, barring sets and other kind of holdings, but just the likelihood that you're going to hit either the flush or an ace or a king, if you think the ace, just the bear ace or the bear, bear king pair is going to be good enough, you've got 54% equity. That's enormous, right, so these are so-called uh, huge draws. You have an enormous amount of equity on the flop, right, without having even hit the flop, per se. At 21 outs, uh, when you're looking at a scenario where you have an open and a straight draw, flush or a pair, <laughs> um, you're already uh, basically a 70% favorite to win the hand, right? Even just with this draw, right? So that shows you the strength of the draw, even when you haven't hit it yourself. Runner runners, um, this is yeah, very, very concise table showing you exactly what the likelihood of that is. So let's say for example you're, you're playing ace-king offsuit and you've got a uh, two-suited board. So you're playing an ace of spades, king of hearts, uh, two spades on board, and another card, whatever. That means you have to hit both on the turn and the river in order to complete that flush draw. So uh, common outs are 10 and the probability of hitting both on the turn and the river is only 4%. All right, so that expresses odds against is 23 to 1. The equivalent outs, as you see here, is 0.98. So basically what you can say is anytime you have a runner, runner, flush draw, you can more or less add one out to your total outs count and then base your completion probability uh, based on that. So let's say, for example, um, you've got the overcards, ace, king, and the runner, right? So you maybe wouldn't calculate the six outs, but the seven, okay. just for the runner-runner probability. That does make a difference, I mean, equity-wise, um, as you'll see in some of the some of the uh, hands after the fact. Uh, straights, so run-runner straights, um, it's a bit more complicated, you got to be very exact. Um, if it's runner-runner to the inside, outside, that kind of stuff, more or less 37, 38 to 1, right, against, so 2.5%. Hitting a three of a kind with no pair, so that means again, you know, you've got the infamous uh, big slick, miss a flop as you're going to 66% of the time, uh, and you know, you pull the miracle out of the hat with uh, an ace and an ace on both the turn and the river. Okay, so you got three outs there. Um, probability of, of doing so is in 0.278%, uh, odds against 359 to 1. Alright, so. Just to give you an idea of what that looks like, um, underneath here you've got uh, odds of flopping straights. Uh, it's a bit more, actually, the most complicated um, calculation for non suited cards coming into the flop. Um, but that's how that works out if you guys just want to stop the video there uh, and have a look. Alright, so those are runners. Um, we saw the outs, and we wanted to also quickly look at the outs for Omaha. Yeah, the outs are then the same, but you see that the, the chart doesn't stop here at 21. It goes all the way down to 27, and these kind of draws happen a lot. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the, one of the big differences between um, Omaha and, and Hold'em is that, you know, these these enormous draws on the flop um, even when you haven't hit, uh, even when you don't have a made hand, say, on the flop in Omaha, 
the I mean the the equity strength of your hand just based on draws is enormous. It's off the hook. Uh, let's say here you got a five card nut. Right? You're holding nine eight six four on a seven five X board. More or less sixteen outs you can hit. Uh, the probability of hitting on the turn is in thirty five percent already. Uh, it's very similar, of course, just like in Hold'em, because there's only a one card difference here. It's thirty six percent. But hitting, you know, one of these sixteen outs on either the turn or the river gives you an equity, a total equity of um, fifty nine percent. Now, that's if you think, of course, just the the straight will be enough. To but this is the probability of completing. This is very often your equity, right? If you do so. Again, when you're counting outs, you should be counting outs to the nuts. Um, uh, counting outs at least to the at least to the hands that you're drawing to that you believe will beat your opponent's hand. Yeah. And again, if you're drawing to a 16 outer, right, just for straights, and there's two, it's a two suited board. You know, you have to discount uh, basically um, one of every single rank that you're counting here. And hold them not necessarily, um, but it's a good idea to do so. Uh, in Omaha, definitely. Or for example, if you're if you're drawing to a, a king high flush in in Omaha, that's almost always suicide. Um, yeah, you just don't want to do it. You want to be drawn to nut flushes, uh, nut straights. You know, basically nut hands, uh, nut nut full houses even in Omaha. Um, yeah, and so on. Uh, we've got here a 20 out wrap and a flush draw, right? Um, that's an example of how that might look. Uh, Jack 10, 7, 6 on a 9, 8 X board. With two of these suited cards being here, uh, matching up to two, two of the suits on the board. 25 outs, I mean, even just hitting on the next card, uh, only the turn is 50, yeah, 55, 56%. Same coming into the river, but I mean, hitting on the turn or the river is an 80% scenario. Now again, this flush draw is not going to be drawn to the ace, so that might be very, very liberal, uh, given your holding here with Jack Ten. Something more along these lines might be more in order, you know, just going with the straight, um, just to be certain, right? But even then, you know, sixty, you know, fifty-five to sixty percent, depending on how you add it up. Okay, guys, um, that was um, again very, very brief for Omaha. Um, concerning draws, how that works out, um, the probability of completing and the odds against completing, and again this idea of um, both in Hold'em and in Omaha that you can actually miss the flop, right? I.e., not pairing or not uh, hitting any of your hole cards, right? And just due to the strength of your draw, you can have enormous equity already at 13 to 15 outs, right? If you were to push on the flop. Any time in a heads-up scenario that you have more than 50% equity, it's a good good place to push on the flop. Uh, high variance if it is only 50. Uh, and again, you of course always want to consider the rake. So anytime you know to be safe, anytime you're looking at 53, 56% equity uh, on the flop, and you're quite certain of that, then yeah, it's time to get active. Especially when you know that um, your equity can drop off so much, especially in hold'em from uh, from the flop into the turn.